Take a look at this. It's a degree certificate, the gold standard in higher education. But as you may have guessed, as this is the fake Britain house, this one is a fake. Now, we've dealt with bogus qualifications before on fake Britain, but what we're finding now is the production of these is so widespread and so sophisticated that it's causing a real problem in the job market, not least for those genuine students who spent time and money getting a real degree. It's reckoned that by having a degree, you'll learn around 61% more than your non-university educated peers. So it's no wonder there are fakers out there trying to cash in on the job market. Something which is of concern to Jane Rowley, who runs a government-backed organisation responsible for verifying people's qualification, called the Higher Education Degree Data Check. We've got tens of thousands of students and graduates paying a lot of money now for a university degree from the UK who are potentially being disadvantaged in the job market by people with fake degrees. So, you know, they're not getting job opportunities because a fraudster is getting in ahead of them. And it could be happening in a workplace near you, as a recent survey of university graduates found that two-thirds felt the increase in tuition fees is making buying a fake degree certificate more tempting. 14% confirmed they knew someone who'd bought one or who was considering it. For undergraduates like Ryan, Max and Olivia at the University of Manchester, that doesn't come as welcome news. It's almost that our degrees are quite insecure in a way because we work really hard for three years um, to, to get a good qualification and yet if somebody can just come and so get exactly the same thing and with spending 50 quid or something like that, then it, 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 it demerits our degrees. And with a degree now costing students a whopping £27,000 in fees alone, it's not surprising they want to protect themselves from fakers. It's a global problem. Um, the UK has a very strong reputation in the world for higher education, so there's a real advantage in having a UK degree, even if it's a fake. Jane's seen hundreds of examples of fake degree certificates, and they're getting better. Firstly, I've got a certificate here from the University of Nottingham. Now, this is a real university, and this is somebody who's used a real Nottingham certificate as the basis for a fake certificate. It's got the right crest, it's got the right hologram, and all the details are correct. Nottingham have confirmed to us that the student named on this certificate has not ever been enrolled at Nottingham University. So it is wise to check back with the issuing university because even when the certificate looks real, you can still be looking at a fake. Degrees targeting the international job market are also in circulation with fake university names based on well-known British places. Chelsea University, which of course is not and has never been a real university in the UK. No, but it does come with a package of other fake documents which do make it look, well, authentic. It's then backed up with a full transcript of the marks of this individual. Not only that, it's also got two letters of recommendation from doctors and professors at Chelsea University. And if you had all of these documents together, you might be convinced that this is a real student and not check back to see that Chelsea is indeed a fake institution. This is what's known as a degree mill or bogus university, and it has no official accreditation in the UK. It just churns out fake degrees for a fee, most commonly bought online. It's a lucrative business, and in fact they do compete with each other. There are so many degree mills out there that they've actually started to compete against each other, saying we provide better fake qualifications than another site down the road. There are around 130 of these fake institutions in the UK, and they're getting more and more sophisticated. On first glance, you might think this is a certificate from the University of Wolverhampton, but if you look closely, you can see that there isn't a P in the word Wolverhampton, so this is a fake certificate from a degree mill. What we have got for the University of Wolverhampton without a P is a backup website. The wording and the photos on the website are in fact copied from the real University of Wolverhampton site, the one with the P. But on the fake site, there's a clever additional feature and it also has a section where you can check this certificate. If I go to search profile and enter that student ID, it will pull up the name student on this certificate and the marks that the student obtained to say, yes, 
we are authenticating this student from the University of Wolverhampton. So, if an employer wants to check that the student did attend the university, they just log on to the fake website and... And within seconds, I've got a verification that the certificate I've got in my hand is a real student, a real graduate from that university. Unfortunately, they're both completely fake. We took to the web to find out just how easy it is to buy one of these fake degrees. A couple of clicks later, we'd found a catalogue of websites offering replacement degrees, replica degree certificates and, my personal favourite, genuine fake degrees. UK PLC itself is being duped because there are people taking jobs in this country who are not qualified, don't have the skills and, and at its most basic level are liars. It's illegal in this country to present yourself with a fake degree and it can carry a, a sentence of up to 10 years. One place where a degree faker was found is the seaside town of Torquay, more associated with summer fun than scam artists. But not if you're DC Nicola Zulhaya of Devon and Cornwall Police, when she received a call from a local school claiming a teacher had tried to use fake degree certificates. It hit our hat peg um, right at the end of the day as we were about to go home and it was apparent that it wasn't something that could sit around and wait because we didn't want her to continue teaching vulnerable students um, if, if it was a genuine allegation. 41-year-old Dr Julia Rawlinson, or at least she was claiming to have a doctorate, had been working at the Westland School in Torquay on a temporary basis, helping biology students with their coursework when she applied for a permanent job. She gave photocopies of her degree certificates to the school, claiming she'd lost the originals in a flood. So the school provided me with these certificates. She had one in a Doctorate of Science Psychology and a Master of Science Psychology, both from Glasgow Caledonia University. The photocopies would have been the first flag to the school, really. That's what led them to contact the university and actually ask them direct, you know, is, did she study with you? Did she obtain this qualification? The answer the university gave to the school was very simple. No, she didn't study there. And after a closer examination, they discovered a few things that weren't quite right. Things like the text on them was wrong, the imagery on it was just not correct. Um, and in fact, it's been signed by the Chancellor and the Principal, um, and they bear no resemblance either. So the certificates that she provided were really, really poor. As the saying goes, the devil's in the detail. And there was something else that Julia Rawlinson had overlooked. She alleged that she got her Doctorate of Science Psychology in July 1996 um, and the Masters of Science Psychology in August 93. Um, those courses didn't run in those years, um, so she hadn't paid attention to the minute detail. Nicola carried out a search of Julia Rawlinson's house and discovered a folder containing a whole catalogue of fake degrees that looked like they'd been cut and pasted together at home and photocopied to cover her tracks. And they weren't just limited to British universities either. She had three from South Africa, but again with one fatal flaw. And actually when you look at the dates, she obtained two different degrees in July and October of 1990 and one in November 1987 and that would be nigh on impossible to complete. Unless, of course, you're faking it. And along with the certificates, Nicola unearthed a stack of fake CVs. But what was concerning was that one of the jobs was genuine. Julia Rawlinson had been working for Edexcel, marking GCSE and A-level exam papers. It was worrying at the time because we didn't know what sort of impact, especially with her marking papers, whether things would have to be recalled um, and papers would have to be remarked. Nicola contacted all the universities from which Julia Rawlinson had a certificate. She was told that not only were all five of the degrees fake, but that Julia didn't have a degree to her name, so therefore wasn't a real doctor. She'd even faked her qualified teacher status, so she didn't have the proper credentials to teach in the first place. But there was one certificate that appeared to be real. One of the certificates that we found at her home address, along with the forged documents, was a genuine um, postgraduate certificate in education from De Montfort University. Um, we contacted De Montfort University um, and it became apparent that that would not be a valid qualification now because she obtained her place on that course through deceit. 
um, and didn't have the qualifications in which to complete the PGCE in the first place. Nicola had seen enough. Armed with the fake degrees, it was time to give Julia Rawlinson a different type of interview, where she pleaded guilty to fraud and was given nine months at Her Majesty's pleasure. As for the children she'd been helping at Westland School whilst faking it as a qualified teacher, her arrest and prosecution had caused a major disruption to their lives, just as they were about to take their exams. She hadn't just forged a document to obtain a bit of money, she'd had an impact on, you know, 60 or 80 children's lives. They didn't obtain the grades that they wanted to obtain, and I think the, the custodial sentence reflected the severity of what she'd done.